beautiful people welcome to my channel and welcome back if you're already subscribed today we are going to do another ranking video today we're going to do my foundations i have all of them just sitting here in this little container if you like these kind of videos do not forget to give this video a big thumbs up do not forget to subscribe before you leave and also go and check me out on my instagram as well i will have my handle on the screen for you guys go and check me out over there and without further ado let's get straight into the video i feel like at the end of my introductions i can barely breathe <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. It's like trying to set the tone for the um, the video and I just feel so confused sometimes. I'm like, well, what am I saying? Like, it's crazy. So today we're going to rank my foundation. So I have quite a few here. I think I have 16 in total. I'm not entirely sure. But how I like to do my ranking videos is I start with the worst and then I go all the way through to the best. So we are going to start with my least favorite foundation straight off the bat and that is the MAC Studio Sculpt Foundation. I know that I had this in one of my top five foundations for oily to combination skin recently and yes it is good for that but I just I don't know it sometimes doesn't sit very well on the skin if you haven't got the correct primer underneath it's not as forgiving and that's probably why it's my least favorite um i also don't really love the the packaging it feels kind of like a bit cheap um it's just like plastic it kind of feels like a skincare bottle to be honest like something that you'd squeeze your moisturizer out from if you weren't bougie and had it in like a jar or something like that but i don't know i just feel like it's not it's not as nice. I suppose this kind of packaging would be fantastic if you were a makeup artist and you had a kit because you can just like stack them on top of each other and because they're plastic, they're not gonna break. So yeah, they just have a squeezy tube, all that sort of stuff. Um, I have the shades NW15 and NC20. The thing, I think the reason why I don't like these is because I feel like they sit on top of the skin. They don't melt into the skin. If you have the wrong primer, it is very obvious that it's sitting on top of the skin and it kind of looks like powder versus a liquid and if I'm going to use a liquid I'm hoping for a liquid finish and unfortunately that one doesn't do it so that's why it's my least favorite my next least favorite foundation would probably have to be the makeup forever ultra HD foundation stick and I literally think the entire thing just went out into the lid which is great I can't even show you guys Look at this, it literally just broke. Literally just broke. Fantastic, I've used this maybe like three times and it broke. So um, yeah, this is definitely the wrong shade for me. I could use it as like a contour or something like that. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's like very, very orange. Um, there's something about stick foundations that I really just do not like. I just don't find them very hygienic. They're really hard to move the product around with a brush. I like the liquid form of this. I, I do like Makeup Forever foundations and powders and stuff like that. I just don't like this one. I think it's the hygiene side of things. It looks okay on the skin. It can be a bit streaky, but yeah, again, plastic packaging could be good for a makeup artist. I do use this, but I just don't like it as much as some of my other foundations. So that one's down the bottom end of my least favorite. My next least favorite foundation would probably have to be my uh, Fenty Beauty one. So this is in my project pan at the moment. Um, I have the shade 200. This oxidizes gray on me. I just can't seem to, even if I like shake it up and really get the pigments and stuff moving, it just doesn't work for me. It breaks up really easily. It sits kind of funny on the skin. I feel like being that I'm an oily to combination girl, it lifts. So it looks good for maybe the first two hours of wear and then it starts to lift. And although it doesn't come off my skin, I can see that it's not like settled into the pores nicely. It's more or less sitting on top of the pores. And if I touch my skin at all, it just comes away. It just literally breaks away on my skin, especially around my nose area, around here, because that's where I tend to oil up. I oil up here the most in my t-zone region especially especially around my mouth so this particularly breaks up around my mouth region around my nose and it's not so bad up here and i think that's because there's not so much movement but all this region here is very mobile it's constantly moving it's constantly flexing the muscles are constantly moving around because we're talking we're drinking we're we're breathing we're doing all these different things the foundation has to be able to flex with that and unfortunately that one doesn't and like I said it oxidizes and when it does oxidize it's basically gray or kind of greeny it's 
I don't know. I don't like it. If you guys have that problem, let me know. I might be doing something wrong, but do let me know if I'm making a mistake and making it oxidize or if you know a way to stop it from oxidizing because this shade is beautiful when I first put it on my skin, especially when I fake tan, it matches really well. But then 20 minutes later, doesn't match at all. The next foundation in my rankings would have to be the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation. So I have this in the shade 250C. Very similar packaging to the NARS foundation, which I will talk about a little bit later in this video, which is the Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. Um, literally pretty much identical packaging. It's just that the lid is shiny rather than kind of like the matte kind of texture that NARS has on all of their packaging, which I can appreciate this one because it doesn't get as many like finger marks and stuff on it. And look, I think the packaging is quite nice. I like this side of the packaging, which says Anastasia Beverly Hills. I do not like the side that says foundation. If you can see that there, I just think that's so tacky. I don't like it at all. I bought into the hype on this one. People were talking about it, saying it was really good and I got it and look, it's okay. It's not that bad, but I just don't think it's good for oily combination girls. I really need to start thinking about who I'm watching on YouTube and taking recommendations from because I'm pretty sure those people are dry and I really need to be looking into people with more oily to combo skin because I think I'm buying recommendations that aren't good for my skin type and that's why I don't like them. So this could work really, really well for you if you are a dry kind of person, but if you are an oily combo, I don't think so. I think I've used this maybe twice since I got it. So it expires in 12 months and it will probably expire before I even touch it. So yeah, don't really love that one too much, to be honest. Um, the next in my rankings would be the Huda Beauty, what is this? Faux Filter High Coverage Cream Foundation. This stuff lasts forever. So it's got a pump, which is really, really good. It's just, it's massive. I, it, Sometimes when you look at foundations and their bottles, it looks like there's more foundation in there than there really is. But this has so much product in it, I feel like I just can't get through it. Like, I kind of had this in my own personal project pan prior to the project pan that I'm now doing. And literally, I was using this flat out and there's definitely still a quarter left in there, at least. So, honestly, in terms of value for money, this is probably one of the best. Um, because a little bit goes a long way. This is full coverage, but I just find that it blocks my pores and it makes me break out, which sucks because I really, really do like Huda Beauty. Like as a brand, I really like them as a collective, but um, yeah, this foundation makes me break out every single time I use it, which really like hurts my soul because I do love the smell of it. It smells like, it smells like that default rose kind of scent that she has on all of her products and i like having that scent especially in the mornings when i'm getting ready to go to work um but yeah it just looks kind of funny on my skin it's very similar to that um that fenty one that i was talking about earlier it does lift and it kind of sits on the skin so um again i don't know if that is geared towards people like me i would assume that it is i actually thought that this was geared more to my skin type because i am an oily combo and this is more of a matte kind of finish but i'm not entirely sure if that's what it was geared for so let me know in the comments below if you know what it's geared towards because i'm not entirely sure but i do feel like that one lifts on my skin i don't know if it's because i'm just super super oily or what but it's not too bad that's why it kind of sits towards the middle of my collection so next to that is my mac studio fix fluid foundation these two are probably actually equal in terms of how much i like them they have very similar coverage i do think the longevity on the um Pro filter from Huda is a little bit longer. I do feel like the finish on the MAC Studio Fix Fluid is a little bit nicer. It's a little bit more, how do I put it? It kind of sits more in the pores. It looks a little bit more natural, if that's what you want to put it. It just looks seamless. Um, it doesn't streak up too much. They've been around forever. This is kind of like the original OG pro makeup artist brand. This is a foundation that they would go for. It's a very good wedding foundation. It photographs really, really well. And that's why I would have to say that it does sit where it does in my lineup of rankings for my foundations because it is so versatile. Also, they're very inexpensive and they have a 24 month expiration date, which means they last longer than any of the foundations that I've talked about already, which is really, really good if you're a makeup artist because something like this, you will plow through very, very quickly as a makeup artist. And you just wanna make sure that you've got ones that are gonna last for a period of time and aren't 
like reality aren't too expensive. I mean, you don't want to be spending like $120 on a foundation for your kit and then having to supply like eight of them to give you a shade range that's feasible for everybody. It's just kind of like MAC covers all of that for you. So it's really good. Next, we are getting into my favorites. Now we're getting into my top six. These are my top six foundations and honestly, they're quite interchangeable, but I definitely have my favorites. So next we're going to talk about the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. This was so expensive. It was $99, I'm pretty sure. I think I will have the prices of all of the foundations on the screen throughout this video, but just to be sure, this was very expensive. Has a pump. I have this in the shade Buff, which it matches me at certain stages of my um, fake tan fading off and stuff like that and it's just very luxurious like the packaging is super heavy it's frosted glass it's got beautiful like even the writing on the back is just the details it's written really well there's no plastic on there it's like embossed into the bottle itself and I don't know I just there's something about hourglass that speaks to my soul like I just I love it. This is a very good foundation for brides. It photographs really, really well. It has a lot of pigment in the liquid itself. So a little bit goes a really long way. So I'm not gonna say you get your money's worth, but um, it is a very beautiful foundation. If you are in the market for something a little bit more luxurious, I definitely recommend that one. Next up would have to be my Dior Backstage Foundation. This is in the shade 2N. I really, really, really love the finish on this. The bottle is a remnant of the uh, Mac face and body so it has that little squeezy tube at the top if you can see that um, I've used this a couple of times and I you can see the demarcation line I'm not quite sure if you can see it from there but the marking is here in terms of how much I've used and it's very customizable I don't know I don't know if you can hear that it's very thin but it also can be built for a full coverage look kind of probably actually let me rephrase it can be a medium to full coverage not super full coverage to a point where it's like the hourglass one where it covers absolutely everything but i do feel like this is a very good everyday foundation i think it retails for something like 70 dollars, so it's not cheap but um it's a very very nice foundation for what you get and for oily combination girls this is actually really really nice for every day especially if you work in a corporate office you only need to touch up with this foundation maybe once or twice in order to keep it looking fresh um and i do find that this looks better with wear i actually like the way that this looks on my skin at the end of the day after i've done my touching up and stuff like that versus when i first put it on in the morning so that's a good thing to keep in mind because Sometimes people try something on and they get the first impression of it and they go, oh my god, this looks terrible, I'm going to take it off and start again. You've got to let a foundation breathe. It's got to mix with the oils on your skin. It's got to go throughout the day with, I don't know, different elements that you are in. So if you're in an office and you've got a lot of air conditioning and stuff there, you've got to let the foundation work with that and, um, yeah, give its final result. So I definitely think that this is really really good so next up is the laura mercier flawless lumiere radiance perfecting foundation this is in the shade cashew i adore this it's a full coverage foundation um super pigmented lasts all day luminous finish but not too luminous to a point where somebody who has a skin type like me with oily combo um it doesn't look all funny at the end of the day so it kind of it says that it's a luminous finish, but I do still think it's gearing more towards the satin finish. Um, and I do very much appreciate that. I do tend to use this one at the end of my fake tan routine, just because throughout the week, I like to use a fake tan extender. It's the Bondi Sands Liquid Gold. I use that on my decolletage and on my shoulders. And it does tend to kind of go a little bit more orangey and a deeper shade. And I find that this particular shade, which is Tawny by Laura Mercier, matches that really well. So if I put my fake tan on on a Sunday by a Friday, I would definitely be using this on the Friday or even on the Thursday. So I kind of have a shade range that I go through throughout the week and I actually shift to be a little bit more warmer by the end of the week versus at the beginning of the week. So it's good to keep in mind and I love this. I think this is a very, very beautiful foundation and if you could invest in a shade range for this for your kit, super reliable. So next up is my Urban Decay Stay Naked Weightless Liquid Foundation. This is in the shade 30WY. This is the best color match to me in terms of 
lasting me throughout the week. I don't know what it is about this particular foundation, but I can wear it on my first day of my fake tan and I can wear it almost to the end. So I can wear this throughout the week and then wear this particular one at the end of the week and it seems to work. If you, you probably can't see on camera, but there is a distinctive difference between the two. But for some reason, this shade seems to last me throughout the week before I need to go into this one versus some of my other foundations, which they only work at a certain phase of my fake tan routine not the whole thing which kind of sucks but it is what it is this is such a beautiful foundation this is something that i think i will keep in my collection forever i think actually um particularly this shade this is like my go-to shade i'm obsessed with it plastic packaging so it's not going to break in your kit if you're interested in having this as a particular foundation that you want to use in your kit um beautiful in terms of the gold i love the gold um it has a pump which i appreciate and it's very it's flat so if you do have a kit, you can kind of like, for example, if you had two, you can stack them on top of each other and they're not going to break or anything like that. Or you can just take the lid off entirely and save yourself some room with that. So I love this. Um, it's not too expensive, I don't think. It's very good for every day, but you can also build it up to be good for a no date night or I know going out to an event of some kind. But yeah, it's super reliable and I definitely recommend this particular foundation. So now we are up to my top two and I'm sure you guys know what I'm gonna talk about here. These two are quite interchangeable in terms of what I feel like for the day. So you know what, actually I'm gonna make these both by my number one. These are gonna be my number one together because they serve different purposes and I reach for them as that purpose arises. So it's the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Foundation. This is in the shade Cashew and the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation in the shade Punjab. So very different shades here. If you put them next to each other, you can definitely tell that they're completely different shades. Um, this is a matte finish. I am wearing this one today. Um, I tend to use this at the the beginning of my fake tan cycle I just find that it matches me the best and it doesn't oxidize too badly or anything like that which I really 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 appreciate and I don't oil up anywhere near as much with this foundation as I do with my others so I definitely love this I think it's so amazing I only came to know this foundation this year I bought it at the beginning of this year when I kind of had a bit of a makeup blackout and that's kind of why I'm on a no buy again because 2019 I spent way too much money and then I started doing it again this year and I just went no we're not going through this again I'm not dealing with this so we are on a no buy for the rest of this year um I actually think I might have said in that video three months but it is going to be for the rest of this year um and yeah I am obsessed with this I will look to repurchase it eventually after my no buy but it is quite fantastic and then talking about the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. I have purchased, I'm pretty sure, four of these bottles because this is the only foundation that I can look at and rely on every single time to come through for me and look absolutely stunning on the skin every single day. It could be for everyday wear, it can be for going out to an event or anything like that as well. Much like I said with the Urban Decay one, it's very, very versatile. So this is a medium to full coverage. I honestly wear this as full coverage. I put so much on my face and it doesn't ever 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 look cakey which I can appreciate so if I'm in a rush in the morning and I'm just like buffing as much into my skin as possible it's never going to be over the top and look funny or look like I've got too much foundation on my face and it does require a little bit more touching up versus this one just because this is more of a luminous satin finish versus the matte finish but even when you do touch it up it doesn't cake up it doesn't go all chunky or anything like that i do do my touching up with the makeup forever velvet skin powder i love that for touch-ups but yeah this is very reliable lasts all day full coverage and if you haven't already tried it like have you been living under a rock? It is incredible. So yeah, that is everything from my ranking video of my foundations today. So let me know if there's any foundations that you think that I need to try in the future after my no buy. I'm so open to suggestions. It's not funny. I love foundations. It's one of my favorite things to buy aside from like an eyeshadow palette. <laughs> um, but I love trying out different bases and finding my favorite ones. And I would love to know what your recommendations are as well. So thank you so much for making it this far into the video. If you have made it to the end, do not forget to make sure you comment down below a love heart emoji. Then I will know that you've made it to the very end. And thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks guys. Bye.